Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, this show is in response to a uh, Los Angeles Times article that was written September 11th, 2019, in the Los Angeles Times. Uh, it was dealing with the Caucasian race. Now, that was last year on the anniversary of 9-11. And they wanted to tackle this issue. And in the Los Angeles Times, it states, in the vocabulary of ethnicity, some designations are obvious. African Americans are of African descent. Latinos have Latin American roots. But what about Caucasians? If a Native American told a Caucasian to go back where you came from, where would the Caucasians go? Geographically, Caucasus is a region of Russia, a place from which few white Americans come from. Wait, now, let's read that again. They're saying that over in that Caucasus Mountain region near Russia is a place where few whites come from. Russia, you know, the Caucasus Mountains is where most white people got their start from. But we'll, I'll prove that in a minute. Yet the term Caucasian remains in wide use as a synonym for a white person. Okay, now, previous to white person, they were called albinoids or albinites or whatnot. The classification dates back to 1795, right, which is not true. It goes back uh, close to 6,000 years ago when John Frederick Blumenbach a respected German physician and anthropologist conducted research in which he measured skulls, a then common practice for comparing desperate human groups. His views on race were complicated. While studying a female skull, now he's studying a skull, not, not the actual face or features, this is just a skull. He was studying a female skull from the Caucasus region. He was struck by its symmetry and fine features now, describing it as handsome and becoming, right? Now, this is a white man found the white skull in a white area, and he calls it handsome and becoming, which would make sense. You know, you're going to glorify your race. So, okay. He believed the white race was the most beautiful human type. Of course he would. He's white. Why wouldn't he? You know, you, when, when they found the origin of civilization that gave birth to all beings on the planet in Africa, of course, even white and black uh, archaeologists would say, thank God for this beautiful black woman who gave birth to the humankind. It's obvious. A common enlightenment belief shared by... Now, wait, let's go back. He believed the white race was the most beautiful human type. A common enlightenment belief shared by Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. And he made a logical leap. If the white race was the most beautiful, and this was the most beautiful skull, then its place of origin, the Caucasus Mountains, must be the birthplace of the white race, hence the term Caucasians. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Who wrote this article? I'm sorry, Mr. Joel Dinnerstein. That no, that is not what it what that's all about. But we'll continue. Booming box ideals were a reflection of the unconscious bias and white racial pride of his era, and when he created the first racial scheme of five races. He placed Caucasians at the apex. Yeah. 
when when the Caucasians invaded North America and took the land from the Native Americans, they put their race on top of all other races. I'm, okay, anyway. He believed in the unity of humankind. Okay, now how you believe in the unity of humankind is but you discredit all other races, but you put your own race at the top, which, you know, okay, you're, you, you, you're ripping for your race. Okay. He believed in the unity of mankind, arguing that individual members of all groups had equal capacity for intelligence, creativity, and organization. In fact, he was often mocked by his fellow scientists for his generous views of equality regarding non-white groups. That sentiment did not pass on into America because some of the, the, the Germans, some of the Russians, some of the Anglo-Saxons in America believed that the white race was the most intelligent race. And that's what created the foundation for white supremacy and lifting up the Caucasian race and putting down all other uh, non-white races. That was the foundation, you know. So that means then that the founder who who founded the skulls in the Caucasus Mountains, they didn't follow his um, lead on equality, right? So that shows you uh, how deceitful the followers and the believers in this ideology. They sh- it shows you the need to create that narrative that white was superior and all other melanated races was inferior in order to bolster them up and give them a, a stronghold on leadership throughout the planet, throughout the world. Right. Blumenbach also correctly hypothesized that humans of all races descended from a common ancestor rather than from multiple origins, a key debate of his time. The geography of human origin, of course, he got wrong. The overwhelming majority of scientific findings since Blumenbach time, DNA, the fossil record, the human genome, point to humankind emerging from Africa. Which makes sense because why does that make sense? Scientifically, biologically, you cannot get in. You heard Mr. Farrakhan state this numerous of times. You cannot get the dominant gene out of a recessive gene and pale skin and light eyes are recessive. It's not a dominant trait, right? So let's get into the teachings of the Army Elijah Muhammad. And this is told on a YouTube by the big head scientist. But these teachings emerged with the Army Elijah Muhammad. And it's explaining what happened and why the Caucasians wound up in the Caucasus Mountains, right? We're going to get into that because this has to be known because you don't want other people creating and changing the narrative in history of what actually happened and what actually took place. So let's get into that real quick. Bear with me. This legendary soldier's name was General Monk Monk. Although his name has been pronounced variously over time as General Muck Muck and General Muck Mud. General Monk Monk rounded up all of the evil albinoids there in the east and took them down to the edge of the desert where they were stripped of everything, stripped of the sciences we taught them, stripped of our books they stole from us, and stripped of their clothing. But, lambskin aprons were put on them to hide their nakedness. General Monk Monk stripped them of everything and left them with nothing but their language of telling lies and stealing. General Monk Monk put the evil albinoids in chains and put cable toes around their necks in preparation to drive them out of the land of light across the burning hot sands of the desert into the mountains, hills, and caves of beasts in what is now called Europe. General Monk Monk rode a white horse and he carried a high-powered rifle and a sharp sword of light. The other soldiers in the army of General Monk Monk rode on camels and they carried long sharp swords in their hands. Members of the army of General Monk Monk were Evanoid people who had fell a victim to the schemes of the evil albinoids, 
so this is how they got them back for the hard times they received from the evil albinoids. General Monk Monk and his army made the evil albinoids walk every step of the way as they crossed the hot burning sands of the desert. General Monk Monk would make the evil albinoids run when the sun was high in the sky at high noon. The evil albinoids would jump up and down as their feet would burn on the hot sand. Ask an ebonoid mason, when he crossed the burning sands, was he walking or riding? If he says he was walking, then he is a fool, because he was riding. He was riding horseback. He was riding camel back. It was the albinoid that had on the cable toe. It was the albinoid that had on the apron. It was the albinoid that was walking the white sands 6,000 years ago. A lot of the evil albinoids died from exhaustion, dehydration, and sunburn in the desert. General Monk Monk expected all of the albinoids to die when he was running them out of the east, but those fools lived brother, they lived. At night, General Monk Monk would make the evil albinoids walk. They did not stop, day or night. If one of the albinoids fell to the sand, General Monk Monk would take them by their head and slay them right there on the spot, man or woman. It did not matter. They did not stop. They did not take a break. The albinoids had to walk every step of the way until they reached an oasis 1,100 miles from where they started. At this oasis, General Monk Monk allowed the albinoids to rest, eat, and drink some water, for they had another 1,100 miles to go before they reached their final destination. This was the first million man march, when General Monk Monk made a million albinoids march across the burning hot sands of the desert. After reaching the second oasis, the whole group of albinoids was acting savage like animals. General Monk Monk had covered 2200 miles and was in the land of what they now call Turkey. Once General Monk Monk let the albinoids loose, the albinoids ran wild up into the caves and hillsides, they tore off their apron, walked on all fours, and lived a beastly way of life. General Monk Monk and his army stayed there in Asia Minor, Turkey, and the Straits of the Dardanelles, to guard the border to make sure that the evil albinoids did not try to enter back into the land of peace. Any time one of the evil albinoids would try to ease out of the cave and try to make it back to the land of light, General Monk Monk would cut off their head. The army of General Monk Monk would become the Turks, and after a while, the Turks would go across the border just to take heads off. Any albinoid they caught trying to come back across the border, whoop! Off went their head. In the Bible, where it talks about an angel who had a flaming sword guarding paradise, it is taken from the story of General Monk Monk who had a sword of light, a lightsaber, and was protecting the holy city from the evil albinoids. This is what the ebonoids did to the albinoids. This is what the gods did to the devils. General Monk Monk and his army and their descendants kept the albinoids confined in the caves of Europe for 2,000 years. Within 1,000 years after they had gotten there, the albinoids were on all fours and could not stand upright. When the albinoids were free from the caves, they created a holiday called Thanksgiving, which is symbolic to what took place during the time of General Monk Monk. The turkey is symbolic of the Turks, who wore red fez with a tassel hanging down their heads, which was loose meat upon the head of the turkey. This is why the albinoids named the bird turkey. The albinoid would take this bird and chop off its head as a ritual form of revenge in the same way that General Monk Monk and his army of Turks would cut the heads off of albinoids. See, so that, that was talking about how General Monk Monk, a Moor, black man, and his army ran the Caucasians, where at the time they were uh, albino, albinoids or white, what, or what you would say, white people from the holy, from the east, because they was causing mischief in the east. But they gathered up all that they can find. Some of the black people hid, and they 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 took some as wives. They hid some, so General Muck Muck didn't gather all of the white people out of the Middle East, and then so they mixed in with the black people in the Middle East, and that's why you have the um, minor. Uh, that's why you have the uh, mulattoes in uh, the Middle East. 
So that's what that that's how that happened when you that's why when you go to the Middle East you see dark skinned people who've been there for centuries and generations, but you see a lot of light skinned Arabs and a lot of light skinned Middle Easterners. That's be due to the mixture of the the whites and the blacks and they all spring of course the mulatto. So yeah. Did all white people start from the Caucasus Mountains? No. You had a lot in the Middle East who were gathered up a million and sent to the Caucasus Mountains. So when they went and then researched and found the origin of the the white man, they go to the Caucasus Mountains. It's where the majority of them got their start from. So I hope that uh, gave you a quick history lesson and answered what was talked about September 11, 2019 in the Los Angeles time. Just a quick overview, Vogue Pick Radio, we out.